first and foremost, the lady in the group, Isabel Vitelli, uh, the global head of digital innovation at Sanofi. Welcome, Isabel. Really looking forward to the pharma point of view as far as, uh, you know, this whole partnership and consortium is concerned. Uh, second, but in no particular second order, Jérôme Berger, who is the uh, president and managing partner of Orange Ventures. But here today, Jérôme, you're representing Orange broadly. Uh, because Orange, the large, wider company, is the founding partner of Future for Care. And then uh, Cyril Francois, COO of Capgemini Invent, uh, which is a, uh, a business unit within Capgemini, the broader um, global consulting uh, company. Um, we won't spend any time getting you to describe your companies. I think most people know who Orange is, know who Capgemini is, and definitely know who Sanofi is. Um, so we'll just let you... I guess, bring certain anecdotes back into your answers to the questions. Um, this, the purpose of this uh, particular um, panel is really linked to Future for Care. Uh, Future for Care is a new entity that has been set up by Generali, Orange, Sanofi and Capgemini uh, and has uh, the ambition of being the digital health uh, accelerator and institution uh, for for Europe. Uh, and we, two days ago, had the great pleasure of announcing a partnership between Galen Growth and Future for Care, um, where Galen Growth really wants to be able to play a significant role uh, in helping Future for Care and its founding partners uh, establish itself as that um, leading um, platform for digital health innovation across Europe. Um, and so our focus today is not on future for care, it's really around digital health in Europe. Uh, and so that's why our title is really around why the future of digital health in Europe could be very bright. Um, now, Europe is often in any ranking tables when it comes to digital health, um, seen as the, the, the kind of the poor cousin. Certainly, we at Gale and Growth have known that over the last few years of reporting key trends across the regional ecosystems, and we cover all of them, uh, have always talked about, particularly if you look at funding, for example, looked about uh, the US being in the lead and Asia usually the number two ecosystem behind the US in terms of venture volume as well as total funding. Um, but we always underestimate, as a result, the European digital health ecosystem. So that's why we're focused on that today. And let me give you a few more uh, points before, before we dive into some questions. Um, Opportune because, um, as we know, the pandemic has accelerated the adoption of technology within healthcare. It's in fact disrupted expectations that just about every single touch point has in digital health, be it the patient, be it the HCP, um, be it media, be it health systems, etc. Uh, and so uh, we've seen that happen in France, for example, uh, where the national vaccine immunization program was heavily powered, let's say, by digital platforms like Dr. Lib in terms of getting people to get in touch, getting people to, to book their vaccine, etc. So we're seeing an increasing amount of technology appear from, into, into um, the way in which uh, primary care certainly is being, uh, is being managed. Governments also are introducing digital health new regulations and reimbursement. Germany has been very visible with its DIGA uh, or DGAV. Uh, and we should continue to keep an eye on that because I think they're now on their 26 or 27 digital health venture that's reached approval on reimbursement. But President Macron in France has been very vocal around the fact that he wants to do the same thing. And so uh, we're looking at uh, France emulating what's happening in Germany or certainly building on the foundations of what they've done before to, to look similar. Scotland did the same thing a few weeks, a few months ago in announcing a DTX reimbursement mechanism in Scotland. So the concept of healthcare and health systems having a digital front door is really becoming a reality. Uh, and therefore we can't therefore ignore digital health innovation in Europe. Um, and so that means the same thing for the stakeholders within the organization, within the health system, such as Orange, such as Sanofi, etc., who not only will be impacted by this, but need to play a role in shaping that debate. Can we do that in European digital health? But the answer, I believe, is yes. And I think it's very clear that you believe so as well, panel members. Um, if we look at Western Europe alone, digital health is alive and very well. Just to give you some stats, there are at least 2,000 ventures that are alive and well, and as in they're 
they're incorporated they've raised funding they've got a solution in market and they're making a difference at, at a patient level um the total number of digital ventures in europe has experienced certainly a combined annual growth rate of at least 10 percent since 2016 and that's one of the fastest great rate of growth if you compare all the regions that 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 uh, that we have monitored through uh, throughout the last few years, the top three categories, and now what I mean by that is the value proposition of digital health ventures uh, in Europe are disease management, as you would expect, chronic disease management, remote monitoring is certainly fast in growth, and I think we'll continue seeing a lot of growth in that. So I'm absolutely fascinated to see what the cohort will look like, and we'll ask that question. Um, don't underestimate their funding. Certainly, the European ecosystem has attracted over 15 billion US dollars of venture capital funding. So I'm just talking about funding into the system here, I'm not talking about exits. I'm just talking about funding here. Um, that's across 2,200 deals. That was an average deal size of about 7 million US dollars. Just for context, in the US, it's about 2,400 ventures. Uh, combined on growth rate of 7%. As you can see, it's lower than Europe. Um, but of course, it's attracted a 110 billion US dollars of, of venture capital uh, mm. over 5,400 deals. But we expect that from the US. If you look at the data this year, the US is breaking records all over again. So let me give you Asia as a contrast. 2,600 ventures, so a little bit more than Europe, uh, Western Europe, sorry, rather than just the whole of Europe. Combined on growth rate of 6%, so again, less than Europe, uh, and has attracted $37 billion of venture capital. So as you can see, Europe is fighting a really good fight in terms of the volume of ventures it has, in terms of the funding it's attracting, but a lot more needs to be done to help that whole ecosystem really scale. Because if you look at the maturity, an enormous percentage of those ventures are still in early stage. And therefore, mm -hmm. there's a lot needs to be done by every actor in the ecosystem to bring it forward. So it's a really good background and context for our panel members today. Um, and, and to understand their expectations as well, the role they're going to play. So let me start with you, Isabel, if I may, um, and ask you a very simple question, really, um, which is, why do you, as an author, believe that digital health in Europe has got a bright future? Uh, and what are those signals and key trends that you, as an author, are looking at uh, that are not only informing you that it is, but also have convinced you that Future for Care is definitely something you want to be involved in. So first of all, Julia, so first of all, Julia, I would like to uh, to thank you very much for the invitation, and I am so pleased to have to have this conversation with uh, Cyril and Jerome today. Uh, so what about uh, our point of view in Sanofi? So maybe just, uh, and you have mentioned that just before, it's probably because of the dynamic in Europe. Uh, that we are also so interested by doing something concrete in order to accelerate the development of digital solutions and to help and to support uh, uh, startups in this way. Um, from a general point of view, it's true that COVID-19 has accelerated the use and the acceptance of digital technologies. Uh, they have been used, among other things, to allow online medical consultations from home to in for increasing efficiency in diagnosis, and treatment of patients through telemedicine. Also, we have, uh, we have observed a, 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 an increase of collaborative teleworking allowed medical teams to collaborate across different hospital sites. And of course, uh, the uh, increase of online education uh, with a, a, a huge reinforcement. You have just mentioned just before Dr. Lieb and think of it, uh, Dr. Lieb now, is uh, the, uh, the company uh, who is ranked as the most useful company during the crisis by French people. So there's a big change in this, uh, in this world. There are many moving pieces in digital healthcare framework where in Europe countries are looking to shape an environment reflecting our behavioral changes when it comes to digital service use. You have mentioned what happened in Germany in France, and it's probably also the case in other uh, European countries. Um, it's true that in France, uh, Emmanuel Macron supports a lot uh, the uh, evolution of, uh, of uh, uh, digital health. And what is uh, really interesting is also that it's a key topic, not only in France, but in Europe. 
And uh, we will, France will take over the European presidency team starting in July, in July 2022. And we know that digital will be part of their priority area. So what you think uh, at Sanofi is that um, the, the success of digital health in, is in, in a certain way is in our hands to keep this space attractive. And it's also the question of the, tech, the, um, uh, the European health and technology sovereignty. It's something that we discussed a lot uh, with, uh, with Jerome, but also with Cyril and with our colleagues and our, our, uh, our, our colleagues in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Generali, sorry. That... For Sanofi itself, sorry, Julien, but so for Sanofi itself, it's true mm. that uh, our vocation is to support people facing health challenges, okay? And uh, so it's just something natural for us to uh, now to, uh, to want to be part, to be at the heart of uh, this uh, dynamic in digital health care. And what we want to do really is to, uh, at the hand, uh, the vision is to uh, become the uh, uh, digital health care digital platform mm -hmm. uh, to support patients and, and health care professionals for sure. Thanks, Isabel. And I guess for a lot of people, Sanofi is fairly clear how you fit within the health system uh, and, of course, the, the role you play in, uh, in addressing diseases. Um, Jérôme, let me switch to you because, of course, Orange, everybody knows, is a telco company. Uh, often enough, uh, your regard has been the plumbing behind uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, digital health capabilities. But uh, can, you, can you help us better understand Orange's role in digital health for the last couple of years? And, of course, importantly, with your relation with Future for Care, how do you see that evolve going forward? Okay. Well, first, thank you very much for, for the invitation. Um, as far as Orange is concerned, uh, our mission is to bring, uh, as we say, the, the keys to a responsible digital world to, uh, to everyone. Uh, and of course, what is more important in a, in a digital world uh, than uh, being able to deal with the most important thing in life, that is, uh, that is health. So I would say this is uh, um, an area that we needed to tackle uh, one way or the other. And we have, uh, for a long time, in fact, um, basically through the angle of uh, how we serve uh, large uh, companies and, and businesses, uh, being very present in uh, um, uh, securing the networks, in uh, uh, trying to integrate all the applications, especially at the level of hospitals, uh, but also uh, in terms of uh, data processing, uh, we have uh, a division which is called uh, Business and Decision uh, uh, Life Science, uh, whereby we help uh, uh, large or smaller uh, companies like startups um, process their data in a, in a very uh, efficient and thorough way. So it's it for us, the move is quite natural, in fact, both on the service side and also on the processing uh, and, uh, and data side. Having said that, uh, I think, uh, and this is uh, something we had in mind, in fact, for, for quite some time, and the pandemic has, uh, has only uh, reinforced that, uh, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, feeling and also probably accelerated also our decisions on the, uh, on the matter, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's face it. Um, we thought that um, accessing the, 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 the healthcare ecosystem just through networks, IT and data was probably not uh, I wouldn't say sufficient, but probably not the most we could give to the community, let's put it that way. And therefore, we wanted to uh, take a look at, uh, at a broader ecosystem in order to uh, enlarge uh, the way we can help this ecosystem grow. And this is typically what uh, Future for Care is going to do. Uh, and uh, uh, thereby uh, enhance the, the, the type of services we can, uh, uh, we can offer, uh, build a bigger partnership with a large number of people and eventually become like we are for other uh, um, areas in the digital world, one of the key pillars, uh, at least in Europe, of the, the digital health ecosystem in general. Okay, um, that's good. I mean, it's nice to see that that um, reshaping, I guess, of uh, the orange agenda within, within digital health and the role you want to play in digital health. And I guess move away from the, I guess, the paradigm that everybody probably sits in in terms of we see telcos essentially have just been moving the data from one point to another. So it's exciting to see that, certainly. Uh, Cyril, so Cap Gemini is uh, a different animal completely to Sanofi and, and to Orange. Um, can you therefore help us understand 
I guess, why Capgemini has uh, elected or chosen to to be a founding partner of, of Future for Care. Uh, but more broadly, I guess, what role you see yourself playing in digital health in Europe going forwards? Yes, of course. Uh, so thank you for having us today, uh, Julien. For us, frankly, it was a decision we, we were able to take in a, in one day, one or two days when, uh, when Sanofi reached out to us. And, and thank you, Isabel, for that. Uh, to say, do you want to be part of this, of this adventure? We discussed with uh, Iman Ezat, our CEO, and it was a very easy decision for several reasons. Uh, first, uh, even if Capgemini is a fully global company, we are European native and not to say French uh, native. So we have, like uh, Sanofi and Orange and Generali, we have uh, this European uh, DNA. And uh, as you said, uh, we strongly believe that there are plenty of opportunities and plenty of talents and ideas in Europe. We, as big companies and uh, European native, now global leaders, we need to give back uh, to those uh, small companies uh, all our ability to help them grow and, uh, and scale. I will get back to this. Uh, and why uh, healthcare? Uh, well, for pretty much the same reason that Jerome uh, mentioned. Uh, of uh, Capgemini wants as a, as a purpose to leverage technology for the well-being of, of, uh, of people, of course, of our, the companies uh, we are working for, and even for the planet. So healthcare uh, should be, must be at the heart of, uh, of what we do. And there is also a unique uh, convergence of topics in healthcare, uh, which are going to change everything in, uh, in life science and healthcare. I am thinking of data, uh, data mm -hmm. is a new uh, oil everywhere, but especially in R&D, in uh, uh, patient uh, management uh, and so on. All the devices are, are also bringing an engineering part, uh, which is going to be key in this, uh, in this industry. And with the rec recent acquisition of Altran, we have made a, a big move towards intelligent industry, and that fits perfectly well in this uh, area. And uh, I would say all the more classic technology, uh, but all this goes uh, through the cloud, needs uh, cyber security, you need, uh, you mentioned Dr. Lib and so on, so you need uh, patient uh, uh, centric uh, apps and so on. So data devices and technology, we thought we cannot be out of this, uh, of this discussion. Uh, and, and to answer your second question, what are we going to bring? So I think all of us uh, at Sanofi, Orange, General, and so on, we have a venture department. I think Jerome even leads the one in, uh, on Orange. So, so uh, our companies and uh, bankers and uh, investment fund will bring the money. Uh, what we want to bring is know-how and uh, expertise. And I think that's absolutely key in the, um, uh, when we discuss with startups. They have way to find money and we will uh, an investment and we will help them for, uh, with that. But what we want to bring in future for care is skills and coaching in, uh, in order to enable them to grow from a uh, first uh, proof of concept or MVP into uh, a, a product successful on the market. And that's what we are where we are uh, able to, uh, to bring a lot, I believe. Thanks, Cyril. I'll come back to one point you made a little later on. Um, Isabel, back to you, if I may. Um, what are your, what are Sanofi's expectations of future for care? We have a lot of expectations <laughs> for future for care. So for sure, the, uh, the first objective of future for care is the acceleration of not only the development of digital solutions, but also uh, the acceleration of the go to market. Because at the end of the day, what we would like is to be part of this new game uh, in order to have the ability to bring value to the patient uh, and uh, to accelerate the development of digital solutions that will make sense uh, regarding also the uh, diseases that we address. So um, uh, the first thing is probably for us, the ability to have contacts, to, to be at the heart of this ecosystem and to have the ability to support startups uh, that could bring once again uh, uh, medical value, scientific value uh, for, for, the, uh, for the ecosystem, for the healthcare professionals, for the hospitals uh, that are our um, uh, natural uh, customers uh, in a certain way. 
So this is the first thing. The second thing is that for us, uh, we will, it's sure that I, we imagine that in certain, uh, <clears throat> in certain uh, cases, what we will do is to um, co-develop solutions with uh, uh, some startups. Uh, in some other cases, we will be uh, maybe the first client of some startups, and we will have also the ability to invest in other ones. But for some others, just we will have the chance to observe uh, the evolution of startups, uh, the evolution of some technologies, which could be um, key for the development of other solutions in the future. Um, and uh, so it's, it's also the question of mindset. Uh, we think that for our company, it's also a very good way uh, to have contacts with entrepreneurs and to uh, also to be in contact with the entire ecosystem, with our colleagues from Capgemini, our colleagues from Orange, our colleagues from uh, Generali. And what we want to do also is to partner with other companies. And we are convinced that um, the question and the, the, uh, the success of digital health um, will be created uh, through uh, networks, networks of expertise. Cyril mentioned this just before. We think it's just, just the question of science. It's not just the question of tech. It's not just a question of data. It's not just the question of economic, but it's a question of all of this. And uh, for us, it's the chance to be at the heart of this ecosystem. Yeah, uh, which, which makes perfect sense in terms of being trying to create that, that epicenter uh, and, and I guess that f a focal point really for 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 innovation and to, to shape the debate. Um, a question for you, Cyril, building on what Isabel just said. Um, why? I mean, I guess help us understand. This is accelerators. We hear the term all over the place, um, and there are there are good examples, and there's also, I guess, you know, a long street littered in corpses as well. Um, so so. Why will or what what will be done to make future for care different and successful? What's, why is the recipe going to be different this time around? So uh, it's a good question. It's a topic that we tackled uh, early on in the process to, to ensure that we were not doing one more uh, accelerator because there are there are plenty of them. So uh, a few uh, a few points. First, it's dedicated to a specific industry. Uh, you have accelerators who are accelerating, accelerating anything, uh, which, are, which is fine, but we wanted to have something focused on digital health. That's the first, first topic. Secondly, as uh, Isabel said, it's not the accelerator of one specific uh, life science company. It's an ecosystem play. And we, in Capgemini, we strongly believe in ecosystem. Uh, I think the idea of having not only one uh, pharma company doing the, doing this uh, accelerator, but and not two pharma companies doing it uh, together. But uh, thinking of bringing a telco company, an insurance company, and uh, and Capgemini was a was a great idea, and it's only the start because we are also going to complete this setup, but by additional partners, uh, going uh, coming from uh, from different industries. So industry focus, uh, ecosystem play. And uh, I think the last uh, uh, innovative component is uh, what I mentioned around coaching. We are not just going to give uh, funding or square meters in a whatever nice uh, building. Of course, we will also have a building, but that's not uh, the main topic. We will work with the startups in order to, to support them on their go-to-market strategy, on their uh, uh, device manufacturing, if needed, on uh, uh, understanding the regulation and uh, what they can do and, and cannot do with uh, with data privacy and so on, uh, on uh, compliance topics and so on. So uh, the idea is to uh, help the startup with the know-how of the founders who are around the table, plus all the uh, partners ecosystem that we are going to bring, including Galen Grove, uh, of course. Of course, yes, absolutely. And we look forward to playing our role. Um, let, let's build on that question from May Sihil. Um, for those of the audience who don't know what Future for Care is and haven't had a chance to look at the website, um, what, what, what are you building in Future for Care? What, what have you launched so far? What, what are the building blocks actually that, get, that make Future for Care? So, so far we are at the early stages and we started, uh, the idea started uh, 
a year ago, a year and a half ago. Uh, so we had to create everything. So we have just recruited and we have the kickoff, I think, next Monday. So mm-hmm. we are uh, starting with the 25 startups, uh, roughly, that are going to uh, to join the first wave of, uh, of startups and of uh, Future for Care. Uh, and we, uh, so we have... Uh, we have selected uh, those twenty-five startups, and frankly, it was a, a great, uh, a great moment for us to uh, to receive all the candidatures uh, of those uh, startups, and uh, and uh, we we build a jury, uh, and the jury is also in an ecosystem startup. It was not uh, Isabel, Jerome, and I saying, okay, this one yes, this one no. We had uh, uh, twenty people coming from different uh, uh, different angles. Uh, uh, patient associations, uh, HCPs, uh, other companies, and so on. So uh, great, great uh, topic. And, and, and starting uh, next Monday, we will uh, discuss with the startup on what they need exactly, because the range of expertise that we can bring is huge. I mean, you, you look at uh, those four big companies. Uh, so we have ideas already. Uh, we want to uh, to pro- um, propose them to connect with uh, patient associations. To be, at, we'll have a, uh, a living lab. Isabel is, uh, is very expert on this. We have, uh, we'll have uh, topics on compliance uh, and so on. But we are first of all going to listen to the startup and discuss with them because they are all in a different situation. So uh, they are more or less mature. They are working on the different topics. So we will adapt our offer and our catalog of service. So to speak, to match the specific needs of uh, of the various startups. Cool, but I also heard uh, of, of an institute, um, yeah. and so so can you touch on some of the other pieces that are that are being built uh, to add to the strength of the accelerator? Sure, Isabel, you want to to go for this yes, one? Yes, I, I yes I can. Thank you, Cyril. So it's true that we, we have an institute in, uh, in Future for Care, and uh, this one is something key also for the, uh, the success of the, uh, of, uh, the initiative. Uh, in this institute, we will have, so this institute will be managed by the Professor Olivier Guérin, and will mm-hmm. be led by the, uh, led by the, uh, the Professor Olivier Guérin. Uh, what we want to do is to have the ability to, uh, uh, to engage conversations with key experts, in science and in tech, in the institute, uh, to we will also uh, the uh, the future for care team will also um, uh, organize some key events uh, in the institute, and uh, we will have also a think tank in order to um, to have strong and to have the ability to tackle strong topics related to digital health, with the same objective: accelerate uh, the 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 go to market and the industrialization. industrialization sorry of uh, digital solutions. And uh, so we will have the institute, but also sort of um, different labs uh, that, will, uh, uh, are, uh, that will be created uh, related to uh, the key points of the development of a digital solution in healthcare. So we will have a creative lab for design thinking, and we will have the ability, uh, and startups will have the ability to work um, a startup with just the startup, but also with other uh, stakeholders again. Uh, we will have uh, also uh, 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 an economic and ethic lab, which is key because at the end of the day, what we want to do also is to have the ability to define new business models in order to push uh, the go to market of their solution. In a, uh, um, and it's really important. The economic piece is uh, something really important. There will have also um, uh, there will uh, will have also um, a regulatory and medical lab for right. uh, the scientific piece and the question of regulation, which is not something easy for startups. And often and it's have... pieces missing in most yeah. generally accelerators. Exactly, they exactly. Forget that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and it's so key. It's so key uh, for the success of startups in healthcare. And we will have uh, which, uh, a data lab at the heart of uh, this organization, this initiative. Because one other thing that is really uh, singular in Future mm. for Care mm. is that founders um, uh, will share some uh, data with selected startups for selected projects, for sure in the strict respect of the law, GDPR and CNIL in France, but in order to help them to accelerate again 
the development of their solutions, especially when they have artificial intelligence or algorithms that they have to train. And this is key because what we did uh, uh, at the beginning, beginning of uh, the, the, the journey is that we had a lot, a lot of conversations, uh, uh, interviews with startups, just to understand what are their expectations, what they need um, for the development of their business. And uh, everything that we have, we have tried to uh, set up in this initiative is an answer of startups' expectations. And we have also, Cyril mentioned that just before, set up, uh, we will set up a living lab. This one is so key because startups, it's so difficult for a startup to have access to the patient himself or to the physician. So what we want to do is really to allow them to um, test their solutions during the development of the solution, during the, the development itself with patients with patient associations, with physicians, just to secure the quality and the relevance of uh, what they develop. This is key for the success again of this uh, of this initiative. I completely agree and very excited. And you know, one of the reasons why we're very keen to work with Future for Care is the, the sheer number of building blocks that have been brought in that I think are absolutely critical to success, which is where so many generalist accelerators have fallen over in their forays in digital health. Um, we'll come back to the startups in a minute, if I may. Uh, Jérôme, quick question for you. Um, so four founding partners, Orange, Generali, Capgemini, and Sanofi, um, how will that grow in terms of other um, strategics, I guess, out there that want to play a role in digital health in Europe and therefore want to engage with Future for Care? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a very good question because um, since the, the inception of this project, in fact, we wanted, uh, we wanted the project to be open, to be a wide ecosystem. And I think uh, what Isabel and, uh, and Cyril uh, mentioned is, uh, is absolutely key. That is that the, the value eventually will be not only, but uh, um, in great part in the, in, the, in the quality of this ecosystem. Um, so the idea for us since the very, very beginning has been to say, okay, uh, we, we cannot start uh, uh, such a, uh, an ambitious uh, project uh, with, uh, with 20 people. So let's start with the four of us, whereby we have different, uh, different skills, uh, complementary uh, approaches, etc. So I think that, that has been great. And by the way, what we didn't mention is that the, the, the building of Future for Care was, was very quick. It was done over lockdown periods, etc. But eventually, uh, all this uh, was achieved in, uh, in, in one year, uh, even sure. a bit less, actually. Um, so uh, it proves that we, we really have a convergence in terms of view, in terms of goals, in terms of what we want to do for the go to market. But as I was saying at the same time, since the beginning, we thought it, it, it should be enlarged to other partners. So we are discussing with a lot of other companies, uh, European companies for, for most of them, uh, to try and uh, have them uh, uh, join and bring also uh, their use cases, uh, their views, uh, potentially their data uh, and their skills to this, uh, this ecosystem to, to, to widen what uh, we as, uh, as uh, founders can bring. I would add also that the idea is not just to have industrial uh, partners, um, but it's also to partner with uh, public institutions, with patient associations, with the uh, uh, large or, 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 or less large, <laughs> I would say, uh, hospitals, with universities. So, and, and, uh, and um, you know, uh, yeah, universities and, and grandes écoles, as we say, uh, as we say in France. So the idea, once again, um, is to be able to, to create really what would be the pillar of the digital health acceleration and go to market in Europe. And in mm. order to do that, this ecosystem will grow and will grow significantly. Great. Um, just wanted to dig in a little bit in that. How will you ensure that the perception that this is in Paris and therefore it's for France as opposed to for Europe will be, I guess, minimized so that people really understand this is a focus on Europe? Well, first, I think uh, we, we have to say, of course, it's in Paris, uh, <laughs> by definition, but two elements on that. 
The first element, uh, there is an online uh, ecosystem which is uh, similar as a kind of a digital twin, I would say, <laughs> of the physical uh, of the physical uh, uh, institute that uh, that Isabel and, and Cyril described. So uh, we can bring startups in in uh, Future for Care, sorry, which are not located uh, in terms of where they work in Future for mm. Care, so they can work. Uh, wherever they want. By the way, uh, there are a lot of startups in the ones that have been selected in the first uh, uh, in the first batch, I would say, which uh, will be either totally online or have uh, their offices wherever wherever they want in France or in Europe, and yeah. uh, uh, they can come to us and uh, and sit in Future for Care because they will have entry badges. So I would say it's designed to be digital and physical, but you can have the digital only, eventually you, you'll have access to all the, the full services. The second element, and even probably more important, is that it was designed, it was thought from the very beginning as a European platform. So of course, we need to open, um, I would say a first uh, headquarters somewhere, uh, given the origin of the founders, of course, the, the headquarter uh, happened to be Paris. Uh, mm. But uh, maybe sometime in the future we'll uh, we'll open. By the way, other headquarters huh? we don't know. Uh, but the idea is that it's a truly European initiative. Uh, there will be European partners. By the way, Generali is not a French uh, uh, company uh, as a mother company, huh? even if uh, our colleagues are from Generali France. Mm -hmm. uh, so the ambition is clearly European. There is this online uh, uh, feature which will replicate the the, the physical feature. Uh, and therefore, for us, it's, it must be very uh, clearly said that Future for Care is European. It's not French. Mm. Which is good to hear. And I'm certainly very excited by, by that angle as well as what you just described. And therefore, that means to some extent that, in fact, you're completely agnostic as to the geographic origin of the startup, as long as they're looking to establish themselves in Europe. So what's uh, very exciting from getting growth perspective because we cover all the ecosystems across the world is if something really exciting in Asia wants to uh, establish itself in Europe, then Future for Care must be the right platform for them, I assume. Absolutely. And I would say, of course, the, uh, it's easier for us to address the European ecosystem and, and, and therefore the, the European uh, uh, startups or startups which want to establish themselves in Europe. But let me tell you maybe two things. Uh, first, we take a look uh, very thoroughly also at emerging markets, uh, Orange, Sanofi, CAP. Uh, we are very present in, on other continents, uh, mm -hmm. especially for, for Orange in the, in the Middle East and Africa. And mm -hmm. in the, you will see that in the first uh, batch of startups, there is a startup that specifically addresses some very important issues uh, uh, in Africa. So we are global, in fact. And the second element that I want to mention is that we have capabilities to uh, bring the startup, help them go to market, give them advice, coach them wherever they want to extend their international uh, uh, footprint. And mm. in particular, of course, in the US. Uh, when, you, when you talk about tech, when you talk about digital, eventually you, you wonder about what you're going to do in the US, whether we like it yeah. or not. So this is also something that companies like us can bring versus uh, local, I would say, uh, accelerators or incubators who, of course, do not have our firepower, our knowledge, uh, and our bases uh, uh, in the US and, uh, and elsewhere. Nice, no, great, thanks. I've got a question for all three of you because this deals directly with, um, I think, Cyril, you mentioned 25 startups have been selected for the first batch or the first cohort. Um, t tell me, you know, what can, can I mean, I guess using a couple of examples based on not necessarily your favorite, but based on things that intrigued you and, and, and ones that were selected. Um, what do those startups look like? I mean, what, what criteria do you use, but also what's in the 25 and what will they be doing? I'll start with you. Sorry, Cyril. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, just to uh, and, and Isabel and Jerome will complete. Uh, mm -hmm. So we wanted startups. Um, so first, I mean, digital health is a very wide topic. You can uh, you can cover uh, hundreds of different different angles, and we wanted uh, to start with uh, startups which were on on slightly connected topics to avoid having uh, going uh, in all directions. So we selected two topics, uh, remote patient management, and I think mm -hmm. you mentioned it, uh, Julien, earlier yep. in RPM, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, personalized medicine. 
So we said uh, uh, those are the two first topics that uh, Future for Care wants to, to boost. There might be other ones coming uh, later on, uh, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, so we asked startups, we asked for startups which were uh, connected or working on either one of them or potentially two of them, the two of them, because you can, uh, you can merge them uh, nicely. Uh, so we, uh, we discussed with uh, close to 100 startups uh, and we selected startups which were impacting either a remote patient management or uh, personalized medicine. Afterwards, we also... In the criteria, we also uh, discuss or analyze the maturity of the startup, how solid was their first uh, initiatives. Uh, we wanted also to understand what they were, why uh, were they asking to join Future for Care? Uh, what were their needs, expectations, and how well did it fit with what we can bring? Uh, so that was the key uh, key criteria. And then we had like uh, any. Uh, any investor, so to speak, because if we will invest time and, uh, and energy to, to support them, we had to have a personal feeling that uh, we were going to be, uh, so that th their plan was, uh, was a good one and that we had a good, I would say, personal fit with, uh, with the various uh, founders. Uh, but, and, and frankly, it was very, very interesting discussions. Uh, uh, great to see the different uh, angles, uh, different uh, ideas in the, in the jury. And again, uh, uh, we were all impressed by the, the creativity and the, the vast uh, range of ideas and, uh, and startups that we, we, we could discuss with. Thanks for that. Isabel? Yeah, I don't know what I can add. Um, I was any, really any, particular, you know, any, any particular aspects of startups, one no, or two startups yeah. that really intrigued you? Yeah, frankly, I was really impressed by the quality of startups uh -huh. and also by... <clears throat> Uh, there, there are a high level of engagement and involvement during the jury. I, I had the chance to be part of one jury. Uh, and um, uh, I think that, especially in Europe, if we have a, 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 a problem, it's not linked with the, <laughs> with the quality of startups. Uh, once again, I was so impressed by the quality of their offers uh, and also by the quality of the team, of teams that we, uh, that we had the chance to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so that it and it was probably the first criteria uh, uh, when we uh, for the selection of those startups, uh, their their level of expertise, but also their mindset. Uh, uh, in my jury, I, I, I was really impressed by uh, the entrepreneurship mindset and uh, the willing they have really to be concrete now and to bring uh, the uh, the appropriate value uh, in the uh, in the ecosystem. Um, uh, I don't want to, uh, to, to, to mention one or, or one startup or, on, or another, though it's not, it's not, uh, it, it will not be fair, but um, uh, they have key, um, they, they had really precise expectations regarding mm. what Future for, for Care could bring for them. And uh, the, the majority of them had also the ability to say, okay, I can bring also this type of expertise or this type of networks to the ecosystem of Future for Care. So they have a clear understanding of what Future for Care is, an ecosystem, a network, different expertise, a complementarity in those expertise. And this really impressed me. Uh, and I think that uh, the startups that were selected um, were really, are really uh, aligned with what we want to do and what we want to achieve in Future for Care. Great. So, so what will happen in the next 12 months then? Obviously, the cohort's now selected. Um, what happens now? So now what we, what we will do is to uh, listen to them, mm -hmm. to understand more in depth their, their needs, their expectations. And based on this, uh, so... Uh, uh, the CEO of Future for Care, the talented uh, Agnès de Lierslinder and her team yep. will have the chance to uh, set up uh, a, a precise and personalized action plan for each of them in order to have the ability to make the right connection in our different companies, but also with the other players in the ecosystem in order to help them, not in a general way, 
virtually linked with their personalized needs. And this is key, uh, once again, to me. We have to be really focused on uh, some key expectations and key needs in order to accelerate concretely uh, their, 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 their companies. Thanks, Isabel. Jérôme, I'm going to cheat slightly, if I may. Um, and I'm going to ask you to put back your, your venture capital hat on briefly. Um, one of the ingredients for growth, of course, is funding. Uh, and Europe is often accused of, um, uh, you know, it, it really grows as ecosystem on a bit of a diet of government grants and various other schemes. And so early stage ventures tend to perform well. And then when they get to the series A and beyond stage, this is where they start struggling, which is why we get quite a brain drain to the US, for example. How do you see Future for Care playing a role in really engaging with investors wherever in the world and activating them to take a role within Europe? I think, uh, first, I think uh, things change uh, and evolve uh, very rapidly. Um, and it's not just in, in healthcare, but I think it's, uh, it's in all the, the digital uh, uh, sectors, I would say. Um, the, the, the reason why I think maybe the, the, the phenomenon you described uh, you, was happening in a, a few years ago was because we didn't have in Europe, uh, and particularly in France, maybe a large enough ecosystem uh, and, the, and, the, and the sufficient number, I would say, of big startups and big unicorns. Mm -hmm. This has, has changed uh, dramatically in the past few years, and it's only accelerating. So now I think we have a funding ecosystem which is a lot more liquid, and you see uh, mega rounds above 100 million uh, uh, euros, practically on a weekly basis or on a, on a daily basis uh, uh, in Europe and a weekly basis in France alone. Okay, so. First of all, the ecosystem has grown significantly. Second, I think uh, for all the reasons that were mentioned, that by having created this, uh, this great ecosystem, uh, this will give a lot of confidence to investors that uh, the startups that are uh, embedded in, uh, in Future for Care have a great chance and a greater chance than others uh, to succeed, especially to the go-to market and again, uh, Future for Care is really a, a commercial uh, initiative for startups. I think it's very important uh, to, uh, to mention that. And therefore, uh, I think it would be a tremendous labor for these startups and a, a tremendous, uh, I would say, uh, a business card that they can, that they can show to, uh, to investors when they make their pitch, uh, especially when they are uh, scaling, which is clearly the Series B, Series C moment. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the startups we are we are targeting. In fact, uh, one last element is that, uh, of course, this is something also we had in mind since the beginning. So we at Orange Ventures, uh, together with the, the venture arms of our uh, uh, colleagues, uh, we will play a key role in 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 structuring this ecosystem. Uh, we will be very close by definition uh, uh, in all aspects <laughs> uh, to uh, to future for care, uh, and we'll make sure we bring also our partnerships, our alliances, uh, our network uh, to the future for care startups. And I would say, as far as Europe and even US, because we are present in the Silicon Valley, uh, are concerned, our venture ecosystem is uh, is unlimited. In fact, mm -hmm. no, it's exciting, and certainly we will need to continue pushing on that. Europe should be naturally attractive anyway. The, the valuations are very attractive. The level of innovation is very high. Um, running costs tend to be lower than they are in the, in the US, certainly. So it should be highly attractive to uh, um, any investor looking for uh, you know, a natural go-to point for quality digital ventures or actually solving a pain point, really. Um, I do have one question uh, that's um, popped up in our question list. Uh, which I think we should ask simply because I think it's it's uh, very interesting uh, to get further insight into future of care. Um, will each successive cohort be based on thematics, or will you be more driven by sort of digital health in general? Let me let me start with uh, you, Cyril. In terms of as you look yeah, at sure. cohorts going forwards, so will you continue focusing on thematics, or any, anything digital health could be could be could be considered? So the plan is to focus on uh, on some topics and have a kind of uh, one topic per a couple of topics per court. Uh, afterwards, uh, we we will also adapt and uh, and uh, test and learn. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, adapt adopt the best practice of the mm. 
of the digital world and the, of the startups. Uh, but I think it makes sense. We are also, uh, Jérôme mentioned it, uh, we are all also open to, uh, in a court, uh, to have uh, one or two uh, uh, OVNI uh, or UFO, I guess in English. Uh, <laughs> of uh, peace. Start <laughs> startups which are not aligned uh, fully with the, with the theme, but uh, who, for whatever reasons, uh, we believe it's a fantastic fit. So it's a uh, uh, it's going to be a, an open discussion. Uh, one thing I just um, uh, I forget to mention around the, the ecosystem. One thing which is key is that we don't want to compete with other other ecosystems. Uh, you, you said there were plenty of initiatives. I think what really uh, everybody has to, to have in mind is that it's not a competition to attract the best startups and whatever. There are enough startups for all the accelerators to uh, to be uh, uh, to be fully <laughs> fully uh, occupied and we want to have a kind of ecosystem of ecosystems uh, so we are connected with uh, public uh, uh, public ecosystem fdata paris santé campus uh, numérique and so on and also some other private ones and so on so uh, i don't think anyone should see this as a competition between uh, accelerators uh, there is room for ev everyone, and as uh, Jérôme said, we have complementary uh, approaches. So it's uh, uh, it's by working all together that we uh, will uh, we will improve the, what in fact uh, in the end really makes sense is uh, is to improve uh, patient management and uh, patient health. Sure, no, I totally agree. I mean, it's about pain point, and and we're driven by pain point, which is possibly. Uh, why I think thematics tend to work better, which is you're working back from the patient, working back from the HCP, for example, and trying to solve a pain point versus doing something that's sexy because it's got AI in it. And I think that's probably what the question is drilling at. But uh, and, uh, Isabel, Jérôme, do you want to add to, to C.A.N.'s yeah. point? Yes, I just would like to to, uh, to to add something. So first of all, thank you, uh, Cyril, for, for highlighting this point. It's, it's not a competition. What we want to do is really to just to be part of this ecosystem and to complete this ecosystem uh, based on discussions that we had with startups and with their care professionals. Regarding topics, we will have also the chance to discuss with the other partners of Future for Care. It's mm -hmm. not just a question uh, around funders. The question that we, we want really to involve the ecosystem. So uh, if some uh, key topics emerge, we will, we will, uh, we will uh, organize uh, competitions with uh, for startups around those uh, new topics. What we want to do is really to uh, to work in a very pragmatic way, uh, mm -hmm. in order to really to concretely uh, develop solutions from uh, the uh, where the startups are at the beginning uh, of the of the story with Future for Care to the go to market and the uh, the uh, the. Uh, so we want really to be pragmatic. And uh, in a certain way, Future for Care is a startup itself. So in an iterative way, we will yeah. adapt the model to this evolutive model. Of course, yeah, makes sense. Jérôme, anything to add? No, I think everything was said. That we'll, uh, I, think, I think what um, maybe one, one point to add is that uh, we are very happy and proud of this first cohort and also uh, uh, what uh, has been built and, and hopefully uh, we are sure what will be delivered. And uh, we try uh, once again to, uh, uh, to select uh, a general ecosystem around specific themes, which happen to be the two themes we discussed, but there will be others as we mentioned, that really, uh, I would say, create more value altogether uh, than uh, each single project, which was uh, uh, great in itself. And we all, we all were very impressed huh, by the, the quality of the startups. Mm -hmm. But I would say we are, what was striking to me is that I think we succeeded in creating the, the, the beginning of, uh, of this ecosystem. Um, because when you take a look at the full picture, at the full cohort, at the full services, uh, at the full uh, uh, platform and, uh, um, and innovation labs, etc., uh, I think the, the, the picture is, is, is really great. Thanks, Joel. I, we, sadly, many questions and not enough time. So, so we are running out of time. I'm just going to ask one last question, which had to be fairly quickly answered. It's a bit like being on the BBC and you get literally 10 seconds to answer. Uh, let me throw it at you, Cyril, and then, uh, then at you, Isabel. Uh, 12 months, 24 months time, what does success look like for a future for care from through your eyes as a founding partner? So I, I would say two, two things. First, 
startups telling us that we really need help them. Uh, mm -hmm. Our success is a, the success of the startup. So if we have a kind of a thank you note from the from the startups uh, of the first cohort, that would be great. So you said 12 months, so maybe that's a bit short. The second and the real uh, uh, key, uh, the real success will be uh, patients' uh, lives being improved or uh, the, the system being uh, being uh, much better, the healthcare system being much better thanks to uh, to some uh, new product or new services uh, marketed by uh, some of our startups. Thanks, Cyril. Very high level. So let me be really a pain here, Isabel. It's really <laughs> either Sanofi or what does success look like for Sanofi from the partnership uh, with Future for Care? So it's quite the same answer uh, at the end of the day. So um, success for startups. So some uh -huh. solutions in the market. Right. And in one year, two years, three solutions in the market, really, with an industrialization of those solutions and uh, also value for patients. Uh, and it's something that we, ha we, have, uh, we had a chance to discuss from the beginning as one of the key PI, uh, key, uh, key performance indicator mm -hmm. uh, is uh, value for patients. So we don't know exactly how we will have the chance to measure it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we just what we have to keep in mind is that we are in uh, the healthcare domain. We are in the healthcare area. So at the end of the day, what we do is to develop something uh, to uh, bring value for the patient. And uh, it's something that we will really to, uh, to, uh, to, um, uh, to be focused on. Um, we, I, we didn't discuss that before, but the uh, question, we, we, we discuss a lot the economic part of, uh, of, the, pro of, the, of the, the, the initiative, mm -hmm. but altogether we discussed a lot uh, around ethic uh, because it's key also when you address this, uh, this, uh, this domain. So uh, the success will be ethical uh, solutions in the market uh, with uh, an industrialization of those solutions and also a very um, attractive and dynamic ecosystem. Because once, day, once again, we will be successful if we have the ability to engage the, the, the ecosystem. Private Great, thank and public. you. Thanks, Isabel. I'm just conscious of time and the, the fact that you have no doubt to rush off to uh, uh, to your other other meetings. So um, a big thank you to to all three of you, Jérôme, Isabel, and Cyril, for your time this morning to help us understand uh, Future for Care better. Uh, help us understand what Future for Care is trying to, or is, is attempting to to achieve in its uh, in its first twelve months. Uh, you know, it is a very new. Uh, consortium and, and concept um, and um, uh, you know very exciting in terms of what it's setting out to achieve and what it is putting in place by way of building blocks which does differentiate you certainly we at getting growth are very much looking forward to to working with the future for care team uh, we have already started a little bit of that um, and certainly very much looking forward to to working with each of you three as well in terms of um, making future for care a roaring success uh, as soon as possible and delivering on those KPIs that uh, that you uh, have illustrated in this call. So a big thank you. There's plenty more questions. Unfortunately, we, uh, we, we've we run out of time. Uh, so thank you, Jérôme, for your time and your insights. Thank you, Isabel, for yours too. And of course, uh, Cyril, um, very good to see you join us and, and help us understand Cap Gemini's role in Future for Care as well. Uh, wishing you all a great day and looking forward to working with uh, all three of you and Future for Care in the future. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.